To take advantage of the Asian century and of the opportunity that would be delivered by the flow of people which is capital between Asia and Australia, I could see that I needed to develop a genuine Asian engagement capability. I needed to seek out and harness strong views that did not necessarily accord with mine. I need, needed people around the table that would challenge my thinking and the current paradigm. I needed to get very uncomfortable very quickly. And so I established an Asian Business Advice Network, which consisted of John So, the Hong Kong born former Lord Mayor of Melbourne, Jenny, Jenny McGregor, the Chief Executive Officer of the University of Melbourne's Asia League, and Jason Hitt, the Malaysian born trustee of the National Gallery of Victoria and prominent Melbourne developer. I was convinced that these people would tell me not what I wanted to hear, but what I needed to know. I then set about building a team of multilingual, multicultural bankers who could make the most of what lay before us. So, anyone can put a story about diversity together and about what they want to do, but it's more instructive though to tell stories about what happened, and so that's what I'll do. Edith, not her real name, joined our team in a senior leadership role. Edith was born in Brunei, and in addition to Hokkien, which was her first language, she spoke English, Malay, Cantonese, and Mandarin. Edith introduced me to Mr. X. Mr. X was a Chinese-based developer who had an interest in developing the residential apartments in Woodstock. Mr. X had a team on the ground in Melbourne that came to Australia to meet with the major banks in Bank of Melbourne to decide on who would win the right to finance his project. We met with Mr. X several times and shared ducks' tongues and ducks' feet. He spoke no English, I spoke none of the languages that he spoke, but Edith did. In fact, his first language was also Hokkien. Mr. X was to decide about which bank to partner with prior to his return to China. We were in a good shot at this deal. Mr. X then announced that he needed to return to China unexpectedly and would come to his decision in China. I knew that if this occurred, we had no more than 20% chance of doing business with him. Eva said that we needed to get in front of him and we met him again the day before he left. He and Eva had a very earnest conversation in hockey. Area. I spent a lot of time smiling and a lot of time nodding. The only words I understood were Lao Pan, which is Mandarin for boss. In the end, Mr. X smiled at me and shook my hand. Mr. X had agreed to do the deal with us. Why? Well, because he and Edith both, both spoke Hoki Ed as a first language. And Edith explained to him that as they were the same, he could trust her. She also told him that he could trust her Lao Pan. Had I not opted to get very uncomfortable, we would not have done that deal. By the time I left Bank of Melbourne to join IBM, 65% of my direct reports were female, and we had a genuinely diverse team that mirrored the marketplace that we served. All we had to do to decide to do was to make it happen and get on the door. In terms of diversity, IBM had already well and truly realised the power of having a diverse workforce. In 1952, Helen Keller presented Thomas J. Watson, the then chairman of IBM, with the Miguel Medal, honouring IBM's leadership in hiring people with disabilities. Today, IBM, like Chico Masakawa, continue to embody our culture of inclusion. Chico Asakawa is a Tokyo-based IBM leader who became blind at the age of 14. Chico joined ABM, IBM in 1985 and ultimately, while at IBM, earned a PhD. She is a master inventor in technology that makes accessibility for the blind a reality. IBM does not see Chico Asakawa's disability, but rather her ability and her potential. And so diversity is the outcome of, of inclusion, and all of us can do something about inclusion. None of us need permission to be inclusive. We can just decide to be. The only real precursor 
is that we need the courage to deliberately include people who are not like us. The courage to be challenged and the courage to change our point of view if it makes sense. In my mind, there is a strong moral reason to be inclusive, but I've learned that sometimes self-interest trumps morality. The argument for inclusion has a strong moral aspect to it, but it also has a really sound commercial pragmatic act pragmatic aspect. That is, you are more likely to see succeed in your business endeavours if you are inclusive. We are not all the same and we don't want to be. I don't subscribe to Jim Collins' theory as thousand is two thousand in one work, good to great. In it, he advocates getting the right people in the right seats on the bus. In other words, set about getting people off the bus. That is, be exclusionary. Rather, I advocate that which I see at IBM every day, and that is get everybody into the tent. Once you have everybody in the tent, you can change the world. I believe that the graduates of 2018 can change the world, and I believe that they should change the world, and I believe that they will change the world.
at the end of that, I would like to say at the beginning of a new upcoming future, I would like to thank the entire community staff. And, but clubs are always more well known than other clubs in a good day for me. My role is to be in such an attack to Banshee and the Amakura to meet Swami, Farah Khan, Akhra Kipra Tays, in and in general. Again, thank you VIE for giving me this opportunity. Thank you very much.
you their graduates, outstanding job today, outstanding efforts in the last three years. You should be all very proud and look forward to a bright future, so thank you. Without further ado,